Are you trying to get ripped for summer or maybe add some new muscle but you feel like you're spinning your wheels every time you step on the scale? Well, I'm going to show you today why that could be lying to you and why the three words you need to get in your mind are right here. What's up guys? Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. I mentioned it in the open, body fat percentage. That's where your focus should be, whether or not you're trying to get ripped for the summer or you're trying to add lean muscle mass. Now, why is that? I just said it right there in the answer, lean muscle mass. When you step on a scale, you're looking at the overall weight of your body. It has no regard for the body composition, meaning how much lean mass and how much fat mass. And when we're talking about Athlete X and all the transformations that guys make on this program, our focus is solely on what's happening to body composition. How are we getting guys lean at the same time that we're helping guys to build all new muscle. So let me show you an example of that to underscore exactly what it is I'm talking about. Let's say you started out at 180 pounds and you're 20 percent body fat. Okay, 20 percent of 180 would mean that you carried 36 pounds of fat. Now the rest of your body, your lean muscle or your lean body mass is everything else, okay? It's your organs, it's your skeleton, it's your skin, it's your blood, it's the water in your, in your body, all that together along with your muscle content, okay? Say, let's say you went through a whole 90 days and you wound up at 180 pounds again, but you had 10% body fat, you lost 10% fat, now you're down to 18 pounds of fat mass. So when you look at the comparison, this guy, let's see, 3150, 144 pounds of lean body mass in the first case, and then after, uh, 2160, 162. So there be basically an 18 pound increase in lean body mass. Now we know that when you add muscle, muscle is a great depot for water, and we're going to talk about that and the importance of that when we talk about measuring body fat in a second. So some of this is going to be the water that's also carried and absorbed by the new added muscle that you had. But you can see how this 180 pounder is going to be the skinny fat guy and this 180 pounder is going to look a hell of a lot different. So right away you have to realize that the scale would have told these two guys that they were the same. Our body fat measurement is going to tell these two guys they look drastically different. So now let me cover a couple of ways that we can measure the body fat because I know you guys want to learn how to do that. And of course, we all don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to go get into an underwater testing environment, something like that. So let's take a look at what we do have at our disposal to see how accurate they can be. Okay, so if you want to measure our body fat and you're not going to run out and jump into a bod pod or do some hydrostatic testing, you want to get an idea or a sense of where you are, because I've already told you it is an important way to measure your progress, you have some options for the home environment. Right here, first and foremost, so you're going to see that not all of our options are good ones because these online calculators that I'm sure you've seen, you can completely disregard those guys and throw them away. They're absolute crap. Why? Because they're basically telling you that they can determine what your body fat level is by knowing what your age is, your height, your weight, and what your activity level is. And whether your activity falls into like these three broad categories of moderately active, not really active, or very active, right? This is not an accurate way to get your body fat. So don't use those, don't let them discourage you, and don't let them encourage you. Just get rid of them entirely. Now, what is that? I've got one here. It's one of these types of devices, the, the kind that you hold in your hands. Now, you could also find the scales, and they're doing the same exact thing, but the way that these work is they basically have these panels here that send out a low-level electrical signal. Now, it's the same thing if you were to stand on it. It goes into one foot or one hand, and it measures how long it takes to travel to the other side. Now, fat is going to slow things down. Muscle, being a depot for water, is going to speed things up. We all know how much water likes electricity, right? So, it's going to conduct that if you have more muscle, more body water inside of those muscles will transmit that quicker and that will give you the difference in the body fat measurement that you see on these things. Same thing if you were to stand on the scale, okay? Same principle. But what's a problematic about this is 
that there's so many things that can impact how quickly that signal is transferred, even from the surface of our hands. So if you're a guy that does work out a lot and you've got calluses all over your fingers, depending upon where you hold this thing, that's going to impact how quickly it can transfer through the skin and get to the other side. Same thing I just said, how you hold it. The instructions of this thing are like a, you know, a 20 page manual on making sure you're not holding it in here, you're holding it out, your hand's not tilted or your hand's not twisted. It's like it's got its own set of recipe here, you know, instructions to get through this. Now, I'll show you how this leads into the next problem with a lot of these home devices is the differences in results that you'll see. So I'm going to turn this thing on and take my body fat measurement through here. Okay, so I'm going to get my hands out in front of me. It's measuring. Okay, it's got me at 10.5. It's the top number there. All right. Now, I'm pretty confident I'm not at 10.5% body fat. We'll rely on the next tool here to tell us if, we're, if I really am. And this here is skin calipers. Now, the Skindex is the exact same tool we used to use in Major League Baseball to take our intake body fat in spring training, make sure we did this throughout the season. Now, as I said, guys, we don't, I don't tell you about things that I don't do myself here, whether that be from nutrition, working out, supplementation, well, same thing with body fat testing. If I say it's important, it's important, and I think you guys should be doing it, and we were doing it every month in baseball just to make sure that our athletes stay where we needed them to be. With skin caliper testing here, you're going to get a bit more accurate, but the problem is you can have a lot of variation between the tester. You certainly don't want to have your buddy testing you and then you testing yourself because the difference in how you do it can vary dramatically. So you want to make sure that you're always doing it. It's not all that easy to do on yourself, but I'm going to try here to see where I'm at with the calipers. Again, chest measurement, abdomen, leg, you're supposed to basically pinch and then you can flex so you can make sure that you're not grabbing any muscle, but you flex until you can pinch away, grab, it's supposed to be a little bit below the fold, but I can't get underneath there. So I'm going to grab right down here, lock that in, here, the abdomen, again flex, and here, and then finally with the leg, on the thigh, Five point eight. So as you can see, I was able to drop almost half of my body fat. I don't remember what it was, ten point eight or ten point nine. Now down to five point eight, without even having to do a single workout. So you can see that it's not all that accurate. But one thing you can do, if you have one of these devices, just try to do it sort of on its own merit. How does it compare to itself? you know, your, your measurements from one day to the next. Or even if you don't want to rely on the, the fold, the skin fold measurement to do the entire formula, just do the, the folds themselves and see if the thicknesses go down on the folds each time you do that. So even if you don't have a real expensive caliper set like that and you picked one up for 10 bucks at Sports Authority, you're still just trying to measure the skin fold thickness at the different locations. And as long as you can keep that consistent where you're measuring each time, that's at least going to give you a little bit of an idea on progress. Now, I mentioned the last one here, and it's sort of the one that's not named, because it's one that we take for granted, but I think could be one of the most accurate ways to measure where we're, where we're at and where we're going. And that's to rely on the eyes. I always say that. You can look into a mirror and see a lot more and tell a lot more about your progress objectively than any other way of trying to measure it here with your your devices. Why is that? Because the mirror will tell you where you're at. You're going to see, you can also see clothes fit. Clothes can start to fit a lot looser or you can start to see your arms fill your sleeves more. The idea is you want to find out what is it that you look like so you can identify where you want to be. So what I did was if you look below this video guys there's a link to a blog that I wrote that put together a chart, a visual chart, a cheat sheet for you where you can look and see what does certain body fat percentages look like. These are for men. What do they look like so that you can more easily identify where you want to get to. 
okay, in the next 90 days. We even have identified the athlean range in between that sort of 4 and 8% or 8 to 10%. That's where we try to, that's our zone, guys. That's the zone for our program to get guys into that zone. I don't care if you're starting out at 25 to 30%, if you're starting out higher than 30%, or if you're just on the outside of that in 11, 12 range. Our goal is to get you in there and to maximize your lean muscle at the same time. So that you're not just becoming, what I said, skinny or skinny fat, but you're, you're getting in that zone and you're being ripped and athletic at the same time because that's what it's all about. So if you guys haven't already, if you're, first of all, if you're in need of a program to get you there, then by all means, Athlean X is the program for you. You just got to go over to the website right now. You can actually get there by clicking on that link below. You're going to go to that blog, see what that cheat sheet's like, and, and, and identify. Do two things for me. Identify where you're at now and then identify where you want to be. Once you know where you have to go, then you know how to get there. And it's my job as a coach to get you there. And that's what Athlean X is all about. Hopefully, you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you leave a comment and thumb it up uh, you know, for me. At the same time, you know, investigate some of these things. See which one works the best for you. But the fact of the matter is, you could find some very uh, greatly different results depending upon what you're using. But the fact of the matter is, sometimes when you rely on your eyes, you're going to get even better and more consistent results. Guys, I'll see you back here in seven days. In the meantime, I'll see you over at AthleanX.com.